Welcome everyone to my next video. I apologize for the long delay since the last one, but life and work and whatnot has gotten in the way. This video is on a topic of uh, particular interest to me. It's on microscopy and how to find a microscope for home use. And this is really my bread and butter. I'm a scientist by profession. Most of the work we do involves microscopy. Uh, this video is an example of my lab uh, of actually some macrophages having a very bad day with an infection. Now this is good because I can obviously have some reasonable opinions about microscopy, but it's also bad because I tend to look at it from uh, obviously a, a not budget orientated position. In fact, the microscopes I use on the low end are several thousand dollars and they get obscenely expensive from there. Despite that, I think I can give some useful advice for the home user. First, a few quick uh, terms uh, and key components. So the things you look through, the eyepieces are properly called an ocular. The lenses that do most of the heavy lifting are called objective lenses. You, of course, have a stage. This is simply where your slide or your sample goes. Focusing knobs, focusing on the sample. A lamp or a light source, which obviously provides the light. Not all microscopes will have this, but as we'll talk about later on, good ones will have something called a condenser. Why you would want this, we'll talk about later. And some microscopes will help uh, stage controls, which allow you to very finely move your sample on the stage. It's nice if you can get it, but they're not really required. So in terms of magnification, there's really only two parts of the microscope that matter. There's the oculars and the objective lenses. And the total magnification of your microscope is determined by the magnification of the ocular lens times by the magnification of the objective lens. So for example, if we have a 10x ocular and a 10x objective, we have a 100x total magnification. If we have a 20x ocular and a 100x objective, we have 2000x magnification. Now these numbers don't really mean too much unless you know what you can do with it. If what you want to do is count cells to make sure you're getting reasonable pitching rates, you want 200x to 400x magnification. This is a really good range for counting cells. If you want to be able to see yeast morphology, so for example, being able to tell Saccharomyces apart from Britannomyces, you want 600 to 1000 X magnification. If you're going to need to see bacteria, you have to have 1000 X. Now you might notice I didn't say anything about the 2000 X and there's a reason for it. 20 X oculars are usually only found on really cheap microscopes and they're used to make up for um, poor quality objective lenses. And as we'll see near the end, a poor quality objective lens is useless. You do not want a microscope with that. So if you see a microscope with a 20x ocular, run away, find a different system. So in terms of counting, I just want to show you a very quick example of this. So here on the left, we're looking at 100x total magnification. Uh, these are yeast on the counting grid called a hemocytometer. And as you can see, while some cells can obviously be easily seen and counted, other cells, particularly in clusters, are fairly difficult to tell apart. So this is why 100x isn't really quite enough for counting cells. Now if we zoom in to 200x, so this is merely a 20x objective and a 10x ocular, we now have enough magnification that we can see individual cells even when they're in certain clusters. Now obviously at some point, you know, it doesn't matter how much magnification you have, you're not going to be able to count the yeast in the cluster like that, but you could at 20x or 200x and certainly at 400x count the yeast in this cluster here. So that's counting. That's really all you need if that's what you want to do. But what if you want to start looking at morphology? Well, let's start at 100x. So here we're looking at a field of yeast at 100x magnification. And I think you'll appreciate that it's hard to tell um, yeast shapes apart. I mean, here, for example, we have a yeast that is clearly budding. But in other cases, like this one here, it's not clear if this is two yeast stuck to each other or a yeast undergoing budding. So for the rest of these um, images, what I'm going to actually do is I'm increasing the magnification of my microscope, um, but keeping this cluster in the box in focus. So if we zoom into 200x magnification, so this is a 20x objective and a 10x ocular, we can start to see a little bit more detail, but really not enough to, to say anything about morphology. Again, here we have a yeast. It might be budding. It might be two yeast stuck together. If we move up now to 400x, so 40x objective, 10x ocular, we can again see here uh, a yeast that appears to be budding, but again, it's not super clear. This could still be two yeasts just stuck together. If we move up to 600x, which is sort of the minimum magnification where we can really start to do more morphological uh, analysis, 
we now have a much clearer picture. Here we have uh, a mother cell, a daughter cell, and they're clearly connected by a bud neck. So this is actually budding yeast. We have uh, a second one here as well, same thing, daughter cell, bud neck, mother cell. And what probably wasn't obvious is actually this one here. Here we actually have a, a daughter cell that's budding from the mother cell below it. So this is actually a daughter cell coming out towards us out of the screen, which we couldn't even see at the lower magnification. The other thing that's apparent in this image are what are shown here at these yellow area arrows. These are bacteria. Uh, these are actually bacteria I deliberately added to show you what they would look like. So at 600x, we can see bacteria are present, but we can't tell much about them. It's not really obvious if these are maybe two round bacteria stuck together, or if it's a single larger oval bacteria. It's not really clear. And so this is why if we want to look at bacteria, we really have to have a 1000x total magnification. So here's a 1000x, and you can see there's a lot more detail obvious in the yeast cells. So here again is a mother cell, a daughter cell, and very, very clearly they are uh, connected. They're not just two yeast cells stuck together. We can also start to see some internal structure in the yeast, such as some vacuoles. Now it's maybe not obvious on this focal plane, but if we adjust our focus and zoom in on this cell here, we can see something else quite important. And that's this thing down here. This is a bacteria and uh, it's quite clearly a single bacteria. It's a rod-shaped bacteria. It's not two cocci or two circular bacteria stuck together. And so at a 1000x magnification, we can see enough detail on bacteria to tell apart some basic morphological characteristics. Are they rods versus cocci, things like that. And that's enough, for example, to tell lactobacillus apart from pediococcus. Magnification isn't the only thing we need to worry about when selecting lenses. In fact, there's one other very important aspect that we need to consider, and that's the resolution of the lens, and that's determined by something called the numerical aperture, and this is in addition to the magnification. So basically, the numerical aperture is a measure of the light collecting ability of a lens, and so the higher the numerical aperture, the better the resolution. And this is really important because if we have a low numerical aperture lens, um, and that will produce an image of a cell that's somewhat blurry, cells may just look like blobs. If we increase the magnification but keep that numerical aperture the same, the only thing that happens is the cells get bigger but they still just look like blobs. You just have a bigger, blurrier image. You don't have additional detail. You can't see additional structure. So it's really important that you find lenses that have not only the right magnification but the right numerical aperture. And so for example, for a 40x lens, you would want at least 0.5 NA for 60x lens, you want at least a 0.65 NA. For 100x lens, you want at least a 1.0 NA. And under ideal circumstances, you would want a bit higher than those numbers. Now, how much does this really matter? Well, to show you what it, it does, I took an image of a bacteria. Again, it's a rod-shaped E. coli. You can see a little bit of structure here on the one end. And this is with a 100x objective lens that has a 1.25 numerical aperture. What I then did with this image is I computationally resampled it to mimic what lower numerical apertures would look like. So this is what a, a 1.0 numerical aperture would look like on, this, on the same magnification lens. And you can see that we can still see the bacteria, but we've lost some of the detail on this one end. So we've blurred a little bit and we can see a little bit less structure, but we can still see the bacteria. We can still see that it's a rod. So this would be just fine for home use. Now, if we drop down to just 0.9, we lose it. We no longer can tell if we have a rod or two cocci, two circular bacteria attached to each other. We've lost that ability to see morphology. And if we drop down to what some of the cheap 100x lenses are, which are 0.75, you can't even see the bacteria anymore. So it's really important to make sure you have at least an NA of 1.0 on your 100x lens if you want to be looking at morphology of bacteria. Now there's one last thing we need to consider, and that is the illumination of the microscope. So the, the cheapest version is something called bright field, shown here. It's really easy to pick out. You have your lamp, and there's nothing between your lamp and the stage where your sample goes. So these are fairly inexpensive, but the contrast on them is not great. The next option is something called a condenser, and this is basically an extra uh, lens between the lamp and your sample. And this really improves the quality of your images. 
Now, if you have a lot of money to spend, you can go whole hog and get what's called phase contrast. And here, your condenser has a bunch of complicated optics in them that essentially amplify differences in contrast. But these are quite expensive and really for 99% of the home use are probably not needed. So what do these look like? So here's bright field. You can see that we can see individual yeast cells, no problem at all. But the contrast is poor. They're not much brighter or darker than the background. There's lots of visual artifacts like these uh, lines, diffraction lines around the sample. And so this is what happens with bright field. You can see stuff, but the image quality isn't great. If we throw in a condenser, we now have a much better image. You can see here the cells stand out much more from the background. A lot of these visual artifacts have disappeared. You can see cell structure, higher magnification. You can get decent quality images. And for home use, this is really sort of what you need. You don't need more than this. But if you can afford face contrast, you can really see uh, what you're looking for. You can see here the, how this has amplified the difference um, between the cells and the background. In fact, this amplification effect is so great, my camera can't, detect, uh, can't actually give it justice. These look much better than it looks here in the real world through the eyepiece. Um, and I don't have bacteria in this image, but with phase contrast, it is extremely easy to find any bacteria in the sample. They really stand out. Whereas even in the condenser mode, they're not always the most obvious. So that's it. Really what it comes down to is how much are we willing to spend versus what are you planning on doing with the microscope? If all you want to do is count some cells, make sure your pitch rates are right. A bright field microscope with 200 to 400 X magnification is more than enough. It'll serve you fine. And you probably find a used one for under hundred bucks. But if you want to be looking at yeast morphology, if you want to see if there's bacteria in your sample, things change. You're going to have to have a thousand X magnification. And that needs to be from a decent quality 100x objective lens with a 10x ocular. And so when you're looking for an objective lens, the things you want to look for are oil immersion. I didn't talk about that today, but an oil immersion lens requires you put a little drop of oil on your sample, and it just improves the optical quality, gives you a better picture. And you want the numerical aperture of that lens to be 1.0. Now, your other lenses don't need to be oil immersion, but that 100x does. And you are going to want a microscope with a condenser, or if you can afford it, based contrast. Now for a used microscope that has a nice 100x lens with an NA of around one and condenser optics, you might be able to find a used one for about 150 bucks, but realistically speaking, a used one's gonna be 300 or so dollars. If you're buying new, you're looking at anywhere from 500 to $5,000. Uh, but if you're starting to get up into the two to $5,000 range, I mean, that's a lab grade microscope now. It's not a, a basic home use model. So I hope that was useful and thank you for watching. Uh, hopefully my next video will come out a little more quickly than this one did. And as always, a few more details can be found in my blog. Thank you very much.